go everything that you believe, even about God's intervention in this world, God intervening. A lot of us have grown up with concepts of God intervening. And what he's saying is, you didn't see what, what was, you, you saw what you wanted to see. That's the teachings of the Course in Miracles. Everything that's perceived in this world is coming from our desire to see a world apart from God, to see what God did not create through belief. This world is generated through belief, and God doesn't believe. God has no beliefs whatsoever. It's just pure divine love, just pure isness, pure oneness. And so that is a very, very, very deep teaching of the Course, that you, you perceive what you believe. If you spot it, you got it. Anything that you perceive in this world, including even divine interventions, is still coming from your belief system. And the Holy Spirit can use those things, certainly was using a lot of those things with, with uh, Joan of Arc. You know, she was having, like all of us, we get signs and symbols along the way, and they're very, very helpful to us. We, we couldn't move on without these signs of assurance, of comfort, of your it moving in the right direction. Even you meet somebody, or you see a particular sign of maybe a cross somewhere laying in the, in the grass, or just when you pray for a symbol, you know, like when Armel was sharing, you know, she was going through this darkness and she said, you're going to have to send someone, or you're going to have to show, you're going to have to send me a sign, and then Francis shows up, and there it is. That's, that's like for Joan, very confirming. But this particular scene is where the Holy Spirit is saying, you know, simply do this, be still. Lay aside all thoughts, all concepts of what you are. The signs were just to, to kind of give you insp inspiration, to help you along the way. Some of you might think of, like, whenever, has anybody ever heard of like a treasure map? Okay. Now, what is the purpose of a treasure map. To find the treasure. To find the treasure. I mean, what good would a treasure map be unless you find the treasure? Would you, would you say that the <laughs> map had fulfilled its purpose if you didn't find the treasure? If you stopped, maybe unless you got through like seven, seven instructions and directions and then you just went, I give up. Would you say that the map had, had served its purpose? Yes, it did. It was I who didn't follow. So you would, you would say that that would be an insight, but still the purpose of a treasure map is to find a treasure. It's, it's a direction to find it. A lot of times we talk about being spiritual seekers. What I'm saying is, why not be a finder? You know, I mean, wouldn't that be the point of spiritual seeking is to seek and find? Knock and the door shall be opened, you know, actually to have the door open to the gateway to the kingdom of heaven. Now let's just think for a moment of A Course in Miracles as like a treasure map, or I'll call it a road map. But not like an atlas, not to try to take you to a physical destination. But it, it's a road map designed to take you to the kingdom of heaven within. Within your mind, within your heart. Past all of the beliefs, past all of the perceptions, all of the emotions, all of the thoughts, into the kingdom of heaven within. And the point then would be, if you, when Jesus says you will believe this Course entirely or not at all, what's he emphasizing? He's emphasizing the find. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's what it's about. The point of working with the Course in the end would be to let go of the Course, because it's still perception, it's still form. There's a great line in the Course that says, God knows not form. Oh, sublime. In the Beyond All Idols section, isn't that a cute, sweet little sentence? God knows not form. So let's put a little bit of divine logic with that. If God knows not form, and I want to know God, what is it going to take if I put those two sentences together? The disappearance of the universe, which my friend Gary has written about. <laughs> it's going to take 
a revelatory experience that literally lifts you up into Christ's vision that is literally higher, that's literally prior to form, actually, beyond form. Because God is real, love and light are real, and form is not. Now these are deep metaphysics. This is what we're talking about, getting really clear of the metaphysics of A Course in Miracles. Because as you grasp what I'm talking about, it's going to make those workbook lessons so much more meaningful. Like, if you get what I'm talking about right here, when you get to Lesson 128, you're going to be happy instead of shocked. Because Lesson 128 is, the world I see holds nothing that I want. <laughs> and if you get the metaphysics of what I'm talking about, you'll be going, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! And, you know, he does say in that lesson, he starts off one of his senses, the only value that this world has, and you lean forward in your chair, <laughs> oh goody, I've been waiting for this the whole book. <laughs> the only value that this world has is that you pass it by and look no f further, you know, for this world. That was actually, as if some of you have heard about the Gospel of Thomas, everything, be passers-by. That's what he's talking about. He comes right back with it in the Course. The world I see holds nothing that I want. I had a friend of mine in Kentucky one time who, who told me, and he set up a gathering for me, and then I was talking about Lesson 128, The World I See Holds Nothing That I Want, and he goes, oh, I quit the book at that point. Uh -huh. I actually <laughs> shut the book, and I said, you shut the book? I said, why did you shut the book at, on 128? And he said, because I thought to myself, no. No, 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 no. I don't agree. And he looked at me and I said, oh, but 129 is such a glorious lesson. <laughs> and he goes, what's 129? <laughs> and I said, it's beyond this world is a world I want. The world of the forgiven world, the happy dream, the quantum field that I talk about so much. That's what I want. I want to be happy. I want to see the world in a happy way where I see only happiness. Everywhere, always, every direction I look, I want happiness. That's what 129 is. But you see, this is what he does. He, he rips the rug out from under you, and just when you're laying there, he scoops you up. He goes, yes, because beyond this world is the world I want. He knocks the, the table legs out, <laughs> and then he goes, and I love you so much. Come home with me. This world will never satisfy you. So that's what we mean by God doesn't know of this world. And that's what we also mean by whenever the temptation comes to, to anthropomorphize God, make God into a concept, make God into a white man, a white man an old white man with a long beard, you know, some of these paintings in Europe, you know, and so forth over the years. You know, those are just attempts to anthropomorphize God to to give God human <coughs> characteristics, you know, the Sistine Chapel, the little the uh, finger, and all this, you know, these are just attempts to, to make God, you know, it's like in the Bible it says in Genesis that God, God created man in his likeness and image, and which was spirit, not flesh. And then man returned the favor, <laughs> created God in man's likeness and image. That's, that's where we have the word anthropomorphizing.